coffee and um, this is my first attempt uh, at trying to make an English journal of what I like to knit and what I'm working on. Um, so let's see how it goes. Um, I'll try not to make it too long and I'll try to make it easy so that I don't have to work a lot editing and therefore I feel more happy to make these videos. I hope you enjoy seeing me. Um, I have a podcast that I make in Spanish with my friend Vero and it's called Las Meeting Amigas and we've done that for over two years now but I hear a lot of people saying they still feel sad because they can hear about it in English. I promise you that it won't be as good as in Spanish because my English is definitely not uh, good enough uh, to do this, but you know, it is what it is. So welcome to my first uh, journal. Um, Today is February 3rd, I'm in Buenos Aires province in Argentina, so that means that we are um, in the middle of summer. Uh, currently I'm sitting uh, in one of my guest rooms in my summer house. Uh, we normally live in the city and we spend the summers in the outskirts uh, where we can enjoy the warmth and a nice swimming pool and I thought I would share with you some of the projects that I'm working on right now and some of the things that I've finished and that I have uh, coming up. Sometimes uh, even though I write a lot on my Instagram posts um, I feel that there's something missing, there's some, some more explanation or something else that I want to share with you all so uh, maybe this video journaling thing will help me get some of those ideas out of my head. We'll see. Maybe I'm not that deep anyway. <laughs> um, so anyway, what I'm working on right now. Um, I'm working on a pair of socks. Uh, these socks are... Uh, I'm using my own pattern called... Uh, the beach grass socks uh, and that pattern was published about two weeks ago you can find it on Ravelry and um, so uh, I would say around August last year uh, Life in the Long Grass Caroline from Life in the Long Grass sent me a package a very sweet package with some of their yarns for me to try and in this package, there were uh, several skins, several single skeins of their fine sock in different colors. And I considered the possibility of using them together in, in a single project, but the colors were not, or at least I couldn't picture them in a fade uh, progression. Uh, for some reason, uh, in my mind, these were uh, more suitable for single skin projects. And therefore, um, as soon as I finished the, the pair of socks that I had on the needles, I started a uh, design with, the, with, this, with one of these skeins. And uh, it was the, the skein that I picked it was the Beach Girls colorway, and it's the one that I use for publishing the design. But as soon as I finished those, I didn't know what sock pattern to put on the needles and I thought, why not? I took another one of those skins and I put it on the needles. So this is my second version. It's the same base, fine sock from Life in the Long Grass, but this color is called Elysian. And I finished the first sock here and I'm working on the second one. These are work from the cuff down. And I am just a fan of a good heel flap and a heel turn. Um, I have done a short row heel before, 
but I just find that uh, maybe because I have a high instep or um, I don't know why, but these socks uh, stay on. Uh, I find that sometimes um, the short row heel doesn't stay on so well. Let me see if I can get those notifications to stop uh, making noise. We'll see. And yeah, so I like a good heel flap and heel turn. That's my favorite uh, way of building a sock. So we'll see how long it takes me to finish this second one. These have been on the needles for quite some time now. And then, um, yes, this is uh, another one. This is the other project that I have on the needles right now. Um, it's a funny story uh, because uh, last year uh, I was going to do several trips uh, during the last months of 2017 and I knew that I couldn't focus properly on like uh, I knew that I wouldn't be able to come up with new designs when I was traveling so I decided to plan those designs that I would be meeting on um, before embarking on these trips. And for some crazy reason, I picked this yarn, which, which is amazing, by the way. But this is uh, Woolfolk. The base is called Tint, and the colorway, I think it's number two, but I cannot be, I will be sure of that. It's the darkest color they have. It's a charcoal or almost black. And I'm knitting this sweater at a gauge of 28 stitches in four uh, in four inches or 10 centimeters. And you can see it's a very very tiny gauge. And I'm using uh, three millimeter needles. I use straight needles for most of my projects. Uh, so this is tiny gauge, like the tiniest gauge I have ever uh, worked on, um, which would be fine if the yarn wasn't black. Uh, but not happy with all of that, I decided to add a lace panel to the front of my cardigan, which is adorable. I mean, I'm in love with this thing. I'm going to wear this to death when I finish. When I finish this, it's going to be amazing. But I haven't yet memorized this um, pattern, which means that I still have to knit with my chart, my working chart. Uh, so honestly, what possessed me into thinking that I could travel while knitting from a chart uh, with the tiny, tiniest gauge and with black yarn when most of my knitting time uh, when I travel is uh, limited to nights after classes and probably in a dark pub or restaurant. Anyway, needless to say, I didn't make a lot of progress on this sweater until summer arrived over here and I was taking it easy and like focusing on writing and so now I have made some progress. I know I have accepted that this is going to be a slower uh, project for me. Um, I say this all the time. I am not a fast knitter, even though I come up with a lot of uh, finished projects. I, everything I need is for production. So that means that I knit many hours a day and my knitting grows very slowly. So it's going to take some time to finish. Um, and then I have a new project on the needles that I can't show because it's going to be a pattern for a Line magazine. Um, it's going to be published sometime later this year. So I just started it. Um, yeah, that has me very excited, but I can't share any more details about it. 
So, um, yeah, those are my works in progress. I have a few finished things that you might have seen on Instagram if you follow me, but since these are not going to be published in the next few days, I thought I'd share them with you anyway. Um, this is... Uh, this is such a beautiful show. I shouldn't say it, but I love it. Um, when I went to Canada, I met uh, Alicia from Yarn Inc. And she gifted me kindly... Uh, uh, oh, I smell this. But don't look at it. There we go. And she gifted me three skeins of her uh, classic sock yarn. So I designed this three color show. Uh, it uses the slate gray, and then you start to see some stripes in the second color called jazz, and then you have several bands of uh, mesh, which is really easy to work, and then we have a solid band of the second color, the jazz, and finally we have the third and magnificent color called breathless, and a beautiful lace. This is big, folks. This is a big show that you can wrap around yourself many times if it doesn't get stuck in your chair. There we go. I love it. This is being test knit right now uh, by generous uh, test knitters and should be published um, later in February. It's called Washed Out and I do believe Yarn Ink is going to have uh, some kits available for this but you can use any other dyers three color kit as long as you have 440 yards for color number two. So um, if you plan to make your own kits or if you plan to use yarn from Stash, or if you're a dyer and want to make a yarn for this design, then make sure that for color number two, you include a skein that has 440 yards. Otherwise, meters are going to run out. But I love it. I'm super happy. And it doesn't have to be a gradient. I think, I think since you're striping them, it doesn't have to be a fade. Uh, it looks nice as a fade, but it doesn't have to be a fade because you're striping it anyway. So I think any three colors will work uh, for washed out. And then this one won't be published for a while, but um, I'm going to tell you the story of this. Uh, every year there's a group of travelers uh, who come to Buenos Aires and Uruguay. And these travelers come in organized trips that bring meters to South America and to other parts of the world. But when they come to South America, uh, within their itinerary, there's one visit to an estancia here uh, in the Buenos Aires area. And um, I have joined them several times. Um, they asked me to come and spend time with them, which for me is a great, it's a great treat because I get to meet a lot of meters. I get to have fabulous food. They, they have this local food made for them. Amazing. And the place is this old uh, estancia. It's like an old ranch, uh, but very fancy with all these rooms and common rooms and lounge rooms. And there are horses and um, uh, walking trails. And it's, it's just really the most amazing place you could think of for spending two nights and I get to do that for work uh, so I'm the lucky one and uh, so instead of teaching a class which is sometimes is stressful for them because they have to focus and learn stuff what we do is I create a pattern for them uh, which is new uh, which hasn't been published before and we just sit and need on this pattern and I basically just meet with them and I'm there if they have any questions. Um, the cool thing about it is that they, before coming to Buenos Aires, they go to Uruguay and they actually visit local um, brands 
and they take a dying workshop in Malabrigo Mill, which is mind-blowing. They go to Malabrigo factory and they get to dye their own skin of Mechita, which is a fingering weight single ply. And then they bring that yarn that they dye in Malabrigo and I design something for one skein of Mechita. So they end up going home with a finished product, hopefully, uh, that they made with their own dyeing and with their own knitting. So this year, uh, this is not blocked, I just bound off, uh, so it looks a bit smallish, but it should get quite larger. Uh, this year I designed this crescent-shaped shawl. It's, it's got a destroyed look. I'm going to put it like this so you can check it out, uh, how big it will get. I usually make my shawls grow about 50% with blocking, so this is how much one skein of Mechita will give you. It's only, I think Mechita is about 420 yards, so this is great for one skein. And you have these drop stitches here, uh, which give it like this modern uh, um, look, and then you have eyelets, and also we have irregular wedges. So yeah, I like it. I'm really happy with it. I haven't woven in my ends or blocked it. Um, Malabrigo has been uh, releasing new colorways, in case you haven't seen them. They have been exploring with speckles. And I'm such a fan of everything they make. Um, I've been working with them since my first design was uh, made with their yarns. So they hold that very dear place in my heart. They are so close to me. I basically just need to cross the river and I get to the facilities. It's a different country, but really close to where I live. And they sp we speak the same language. For some reason, Malabrigo will always be within my first choices when I start a new design. I'll always consider whether Malabrigo is suitable for that. So uh, when they came up with these new speckles, I was excited because um, I love that companies embrace uh, new trends and like experiment with new things for, for knitters to have a wider variety of products. So this is one of their newer colorways, um, the one of the speckled ones, and it's called Storm. So this probably, you, you, you can already find it at some stores. Yeah, I like to talk. And then um, I just found off also uh, this new design that I'm, oh, by the way, the Storm Show will be published on Ravelry after the retreat is finished. So that will be more towards the end of the year. But I just wanted to share it with you because it's one of my recent FOs. And also I just wound up uh, my uh, Suburban wrap. I used three skeins from my dear friend Diane from Suburban Stitcher. And she made this amazing three skein set for me and I decided to turn it into a wrap, an arrow shaped wrap. Seriously, I love this thing so much. And um, yeah, I just need to add some tassels to it. But it's, I have to block it, I have to write it, I have to photograph it, I have to test it, but should be published in March. Yes, I used, um, let's see, I kept the tags for this one. I used three skeins of uh, Suburban Stitcher in the, sorry about that, in the single sock um, base. And the colors that I used are doily for the white, coal for the black, and uh, predictability for the lilac or purpley pink. Very beautiful colors. I mean, she's very, very, very talented. I love. So, yeah, it has uh, some lace here. 
some stripes, some garter and eyelets, some texture, more eyelets, more texture, more stripes, more lace, more lace, more stripes, and some more garter, eyelets, and ribbing. Never a boring moment with this project. I enjoyed it so much. And so lastly, I wanted to share with you some, uh, not lastly, but next, I wanted to share with you some recent releases. Um, I hope you don't mind that I speak about my work. Um, I have, as I told you, I have been traveling for the last months of 2017 and I really couldn't focus on, on publishing things. I had this block. I couldn't photograph things. Um, I couldn't finish the formatting for my patterns. And I just, I, I just had all these written patterns. They have been tested, but I only had to like finish the product so that I could put them up on Ravelry and once we came here to the summer house I found a really quiet place and a really quiet time in my life so that I could reorganize my work and all these projects and like patterns in progress were finally finished and so I have put up I have put out a lot of patterns during uh, January so you can go check them out we have the socks and your show and recently I published um, also a coat, but the most recent set of patterns are these uh, pullovers called the easy ones because they're so easy. Um, so I made two versions. This is the fingering weight version and I used uh, Brooklyn Tweed Loft, the fingering weight uh, yarn, um, in the Embers colorway, which I love. I think it goes very well with my wardrobe. I wear a lot of denim and a lot of grey and I think orange goes really well. And when I pair it with black, uh, it looks really elegant. So I'm very happy with this color choice. It's a new color that I kind of have adopted in my palette. And, um, but it took me a while to finish that sweater because I, as I said, I'm slow. And when I finished it, I was in the middle of a trip and I felt sorry that I finished it because it was so easy to work on it. It's basically a square. You start here at the shoulders with a cast on. There's no shaping for the shoulders, so no short rows. You don't have to count any stitches. It's just casting on and start from the top down towards the armhole and then you make the front, which has a minimal neckline. And then the same. And once you get to the armhole, you join everything in the round and you just knit st straight the two. Then you pick up stitches for the sleeve and knit straight and knit straight. No sleeve gaps. Like really, there's no complications in this sweater. And I loved the way the orange one fitted. When I tried it on, I said, okay, this is the neckline that I like. This is where was this sweater all my life? It's so easy to make. Why have I finished it? Now I want another one. But I thought instead of just casting on another one, why don't I just give it a little twist? And I decided to design it with a heavier weight yarn. And I also had some bulky weight uh, Brooklyn Tweed. So the same fiber, but different thickness of the yarn. So I made the same sweater, but with using a using a bulky weight. This is a gauge of 12 stitches to 4 inches or 10 centimeters, which means that if you are a fast knitter like some of my testers, you can finish this in just three days. I didn't finish it in three days, but it took me a really short time and it was so easy to make. I could carry it everywhere. The only con of this sweater is that if you want to carry it with you on a trip, you really have to uh, bring all 500, 600 grams of yarn with you, which could be a lot for light travelers. But otherwise, it's really the easiest sweater you could possibly think of. And I think it looks pretty good. 
So, um, yeah, I, I have plans uh, for making more of this. Um, maybe to use yarns that I have in my stash that for some reason I cannot design with because either they have been discontinued or um, I don't feel that they are good enough or they are not easy to get uh, for knitters because maybe they are from a local farm or whatever. So I think I might just uh, put a couple of strands together and make some more of these easy pullovers to just wear around everywhere, not just the house. I love them. Yeah. So I have two projects in my mind that I've been thinking about. Um, we have uh, a book coming up uh, with my friend Vera Valimaki. We are publishing Interpretations 5 next month. So on one hand, I'm really focusing on uh, working towards that. We have to create, we have to make um, social media content. Uh, we have to work on a presentation for the book. And so that takes some time, but also I feel like empowered to start new designs because, um, because uh, yeah, I, I, I'm like closing that uh, book five chapter and I have a year ahead uh, with so many possibilities. So I wanted to share with you two yarns that I acquired last year that are probably going to trample my needles uh, this month. Uh, I don't know when exactly, but these are next in my in my um, calendar, knitting calendar. So this is amazing. Be prepared because it's really, really good. Okay, look at this fake. This is a fade that Amy from the BNMA um, died for me uh, with no particular project in mind. She just um, created these colors. Oh my God, they're so nice. And um, I was initially going to make a sweater out of them, but I have decided that I want to make a faded wrap um, if you uh, followed me on Instagram last year, you probably know about my mystery knit along called Starting Point. It was a big wrap, big, big wrap. And it starts from the ends and moves towards, grows towards the center, and then you ensemble everything together. And I, I am not done with that construction. I want to play with it a bit more. So my next design hopefully it's going to be a faded version of that with some lace or eyelet details. I'm very excited. I want to start now. I'm just keeping myself from doing that because I have to write all the other patterns that I showed you. But this is like burning a hole in my head because I want to start right now. So Amy, I don't know if you watch this, but this is nice. It's going to be beautiful, I hope. And then, um, last year, uh, I visited uh, Walk Collections booth in Berlin Meads and they have the most amazing display of colors. There's not one single color um, in their collection that I wouldn't work with. Mm, same as with Brick that I showed you in the, the orange color for the sweater. Last year I've been enchanted by this um, olive green. I've been stashing a lot of this color and uh, when I saw Catherine's version of it I thought I'd have to try it but uh, I have to have it in my stash but um, they didn't have uh, the base that I was looking for which was this uh, bliss. I have worked with this yarn before it's uh, incredibly soft and buttery and I really can't say enough good things about this yarn because even though it's a really low 
micron, which means that it's a really, really softer than usual merino. Um, it has held up incredibly, incredibly well in the design that I made with it. So I, I was looking forward to working more with that yarn. And when I saw this color, I knew that I had to have it. So I ordered five skeins of this, um, and I'm thinking about starting a, a pullover or a cardigan or some sort of, maybe a cardigan, maybe a cardigan. Yeah. So those two, those two are inspiring me right now. Um, and I'm looking forward to winding them up. So, yeah. So, I don't know when I'll be recording again. Maybe I'll do it before um, I leave. But I'm leaving uh, February 27th towards... Um, Texas. I'm going to be teaching with my friend Vera at the Hill Country Weavers Retreat and I, I'm also very excited to meet Michelle Wong who's going to be there too. I've never met Michelle and I'm a huge fan so I hope I'm, I won't be too creepy about it. Um, yeah. I'm very excited, but also very happy to meet again my friend Megan Fernandez, uh, who's also a teacher. I think she's teaching there, or she might just have Pom Pom booths. Megan Fernandez is one of the editors of Pom Pom Magazine, and Pom Pom Magazine is also interpretations publisher. So that means that Megan is technically our publisher. And uh, so, yeah. And looking forward to meeting so many friends there and yeah, getting some more yarn from my stash. So this has been nice. I hope you guys uh, liked it. I don't know that I'm going to add any uh, journal notes, but I might. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, check in the box below. If it's empty, I didn't, and if there are notes, it means that I added them. So, see you next time. Thanks.